tell you what, going to remote lakes is not the easiest thing you'll ever do. Hopefully it's gonna be worth it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cross this lake and then we've gotta find a trail off to our second lake, which is the remote lake that we're after on today's trip. I'm gonna take a bit of a breather and then we'll work on crossing this lake. You know, it's always easy to go where the crowds are, to go where the trucks are, or the four-wheelers or the snowmobiles. Sometimes you have to work a little bit, but we're hoping this remote lake is gonna pay off some big dividends. Let's get going. Well, we made it to lake number one. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna poke a few holes. This lake is supposed to be pretty deep. So we'll try a few holes here, see if we, maybe we can pick up some crappies or possibly even bluegills, maybe even some perch. So that's what's fun about going to some of these remote lakes. As you can see, there's nobody around, nobody's been here fishing. So it's really all up to us to try to figure out what this lake is all about, how deep it is. Again, the only intel we have on it is that it gets deep up to about 50 feet. So that's all we know. So here's where we kind of go to work, start drilling some holes, get out our tools to figure out what's under the ice. Well, I brought up my Navionics map here on my phone just to see if there was anything on these lakes. Well, as I suspected, nothing. In fact, when I zoom in and zoom out on the lake, all it says is lake. So doesn't give us any depth contours, doesn't tell us anything about the lake at all. So this is where we need to do our homework and figure out what's down below the ice. So I guess we can put the phone away. Our Navionics map isn't gonna help us at all on a lake like this. Well, we've got a couple fish on the bottom here. So this is about our fifth or sixth hole that we're trying. It's about 31 feet of depth right here. And there's some fish right on the bottom. Now, generally when I use my Markham Electronics to tell me what's going on in a new lake, usually fish that are suspended up off the bottom are usually going to be crappies or bluegills. Typically, if a fish is right on the bottom, for panfish, that usually means perch. So looks like we've got a few perch down here. They're hugging right tight to the bottom but the only way to know for sure is to get the rod out. Well, the fish is still down there, so let's see if we can catch them. Well, a lot of people ask, what is my go-to bait when I'm out searching for panfish? Well, what I've got on today is just a small tungsten jig. This is a tubby jig by Acme Tackle. And why I use this as my search bait is because it goes to the bottom extremely quickly with this tungsten. It drops, I'm in deep water, I'm in 32 feet of water. I'm gonna tip it with just a small either spike or waxworm, something to give it a little scent. And that's just my go-to where I'm gonna start working from. Now, I may go a little bit bigger in terms of bait, uh, maybe a spoon, maybe a cast master, something like that. I may drop back to even a smaller hair jig or even a very, very small nymph jig, something like that. I let the fish tell me what they want. He sees it, he's coming up to it. I tell you what, he came up and just hammered it. So it'll be interesting to see what we've got here. And that's the fun about fishing a lake you've never fished before. <laughs> you're not sure what you're gonna catch. So take a look at that beautiful bluegill. <laughs> I guess that answered our question. We know exactly what it is. Now this is not a keeper bluegill by any means, but the good news is 
we know exactly what we've got down there for species. Now, this one was a little bit different. It was marking different than the one we first saw when we first dropped down. The first one was right on the bottom. This one was off two to three feet. Classic bluegill. All right, let's get him off, we'll get him back. There's more down there, let's see what we can get. There we go. This doesn't feel like a real big fish, but I did get him to bite and that's a good sign, so. Well, that's the other side of trying out new lakes. You never know what size fish you're gonna catch. Well, I don't think we're gonna be able to eat this one, so <laughs> we'll put them back. But that's some of the fun of coming out to lakes you've never fished before. In fact, no one's ever fished before that I'm aware of. You never know what you're gonna catch. So uh, the first bluegill uh, on the ice today wasn't a keeper. That one certainly wasn't a keeper, but I'm guessing if we've got fish like that here, there's probably some good sized ones here somewhere. We have just gotta find them. All right, there's another one on the Markham. I can see him. So what my technique is, I usually stop the bait a foot or two above the fish. And I can see right now he's coming up. He's coming up towards it. There's one or two fish coming. He's coming up. He's coming right on it. He is right on it right now. We'll see if he wants it. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> he's on it. He's on it. Come on. I can see two different fish on the Markham and they're following it. They're not real aggressive. They're coming up to it and looking. There they go. Now I've got a third fish <laughs> that's entered the picture. Typically when you can get multiple fish in on at one time, they tend to be a little more aggressive. So again, I'm gonna stay above the school of fish. We got multiple fish here and try to pick the aggressive fish out. We've got one coming up to it right now. No, nope, he slacked off and backed off a little bit. So I like to stay above the school, find the aggressive fish, let them come up to it, and see which one wants to take it. Okay, so I've got fish on my Markham right now. I can see them down there. There's a couple fish down at the bottom. They didn't seem to really go after that tungsten jig as much as I'd like, so I've downsized. I've gone with just a VMC Nymph jig, very, very small profile. I tipped it with just a small uh, waxworm, or in this case, I was using a spike. We'll get that down there and see how they like this. Now, the downside of downsizing is that it doesn't get to the bottom near as quick as some of your bigger uh, jigs and spoons and so on. So you have to be a little more patient getting it down to the bottom. Well, they see it. Let's see if we can get them to bite. Well, my rule of thumb is if I've approached a fish or more than one fish twice and they don't like my offering, time to switch to something different. So obviously what I've got on is not attracting their interest enough to bite. Now the fish are here, I can definitely see them. They're aggressive enough that they're coming up to the bait, but they're not biting. So that means one of two things, either I've got to find the right bait or the right presentation, or I have inactive fish and we might as well move on and try to find something different. There's a fish. Again, not a real big fish, but uh, I tell you, they don't seem to want to hit. They just want to chase it around and see a real small bluegill. Now, I'm noticing a pattern start to develop, and this is something that I've picked up over the years fishing bluegills. When you have fish that seem to just scream up off the bottom and want to meet your jig, uh, halfway down, it tends to be smaller fish. Usually what that means is those fish are real curious, they're small, they're coming up, they see the jig, and then as soon as they get up to it, uh, then they scatter real quick. So it's a pretty good indication that most of the fish that are here right now that we're seeing on the Markham are smaller fish. So we'll most likely move off, see if we can find some bigger fish in a different hole. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Ice Force by Rapala and Strike Master. Well, we've relocated to a little different part of this lake and uh, drilled a few holes just to see what we could find. Now, most of the fish that we were finding in the first holes were a lot of fish, but not real active fish. And the fish that were active were pretty small. So 
we've relocated, we've come in a little bit shallower in 15 to 16 feet of water here. And uh, we're gonna see if we can find some aggressive fish here. Well, as you can probably tell, we've got a little bit of a weather change here. Uh, as we get further in the afternoon, it's kind of clouded up even a little bit more. And now we've got a little light snow falling. Uh, earlier today, we actually had some mist in the air. Oh, there was a good hit. He came up and smacked it pretty good. This feels like a little bit better fish. There we go. It's a little bit more what we're looking for. Nice northern Wisconsin bluegill. Again, little guy, but uh, not what we're interested in taking home, but much better than what we had in the last few holes. So, all right, we'll go ahead and get him back, see if we can find something just a little bit bigger. What's very common in a lot of these small little remote lakes that don't get fished very often is you'll find stunted bluegills. And um, that's a problem in a lot of lakes around the northern part of Wisconsin. Again, if you don't get a lot of fishing pressure and there aren't big predator fish to clean out some of these bluegills, what happens is there's so many of them in the lake that they never really get any bigger than probably four or five inches. And it's a common problem we see across the northern part of the state. And uh, it's really, really tough to find good fish uh, when you've got stunted bluegills in a lake. And really what needs to happen is you need to take some of those fish or we need some predators that are injected into the system to clean out some of those smaller bluegills. Well, there's fish down there. There's two or three down, but not real aggressive. Here I've got one that's starting to come up. Let's see if I can get him to bite. You know, presentation is another big key when you're fishing for panfish. A lot of times you can have the right bait, you can have everything right, but your presentation may be off. And what I mean by that is presentation can be things like aggressive jigging, it can be a dead stick presentation. Uh, a lot of times we'll use a tip down if they want something that, you know, just is not moving at all. We'll put a minnow on a tip down, we use a dangler rod holder for that. Uh, or in some cases it can be just a slow lift. Or I know with crappies, one of my favorite presentations is to get above the fish and then a slow drop. And you almost are like you're dropping the bait right into their mouth. So you really have to kind of experiment with different presentations. Ooh, that fish liked that presentation. So I kind of used the old crappie drop down to him as I was explaining it and he hit it. So sometimes you have to just experiment with different presentations to find what the fish are gonna like and what they're going to bite. <laughs> well, that's a little bit more of what we came here for. That's a beautiful little bluegill. Again, not the size that we're going to keep and eat, but a ton of fun to catch. Just a great little fish. All right, well, the time of day is right. We've got about an hour left before dark, and uh, we found some active fish. So let's kind of hunker down fine-tune our presentation, fine-tune our baits, and see if we can find some of these big guys to put on the ice. So what I find for panfish for presentations is typically, again, I'll drop down to them, not all the way to the fish. I'll always stop my bait above the fish, give them a few seconds to come up if you've got that active fish that wants to come up and bite. And then from there, I'll usually raise up slow I'll drop slow I've got a fish coming up to me right now so I'm just gonna slowly drop kind of meet him a little bit okay now he didn't bite I'm gonna slowly raise I'm gonna jig see if I can get him to chase a little bit because generally you've got to work some of these fish sometimes to to really talk him into biting You know, I always say if I can have more than one fish on my markham at a time, it always increases my odds because those fish definitely are in competition with each other to feed. Look at that beautiful Wisconsin bluegill. Now that's what we came for. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Beautiful colors on them. They're just a ton of fun to catch. You know, when you set the hook on these guys, you know it immediately. They fight like crazy. Look at the beautiful colors. Just big, thick fish. <laughs> Incredible. Now the rod setup that I like to use for bluegills, 
crappies, even perch, um, is this beaver dam noodle rod. And the advantage of the noodle rod, it's got a very, very soft tip. You can see that, in fact, you don't need to use a spring bobber or anything. It's got a real soft tip, but yet it's got good backbone. So when you set the hook, I've got a fish coming up to me right now. When you set the hook, you've got some backbone there to be able to, to get a good deep hook set, but still be sensitive enough to detect a bite. Here we go, come on. There he is. <laughs> see what I mean when you set that hook, you got a nice flexible tip so you can see what's going on, but still enough backbone to get a good hook set on these fish. Look at that, just another beautiful Wisconsin bluegill. Look at that, he ate that tungsten jig. Incredible. Yeah, this is awesome. We're here in northern Wisconsin and the snow's coming down and you know, this is really a neat part of the state. It's one of my favorite areas. If you love the snowmobile, um, this is kind of one of those areas that you come to in the winter. Um, right now, in the I live in the western part of Wisconsin and uh, there's no snow there at all and we're mid-January, but you come here and there's always snow and fish. Had one charging my bait there for a second. I thought maybe we we're gonna get hooked up, but he decided to move on. But another one there, let's see if we can get him. Oh, there we go. He nailed it. That's it. <laughs> there we go. Now, this is a female fish. So the last two we caught were bull males. Now this is a female. You can see she's a little bit lighter in color a little bit lighter and smaller profile around the gill itself. The bulls have a more uh, pronounced gill, more, more dark uh, blue gill, and underneath on a male will be orange. A female will typically be just yellow. So this is a female fish, so if you wanna keep fish to eat, this is a female, the hen, this is what you'd wanna keep. Now this one's a little bit small, so we're gonna to return to the water, but that's the difference between a hen or a female, and a bull, a male. All right, here he comes. He's coming, he's coming up to it. Let's see if he's gonna bite it. Yeah, he did it. Ooh, that felt much better <laughs> when he bit. I don't know if he's a bigger fish. I think he was in one of those smaller fish that was real active at the top, but <laughs> he sure hit it. Get him back down. And Right back at it. All right, got another fish right here on the very one. <laughs> it's fun, it's that time of day where they're really starting to turn on and now they're starting to bite. <laughs> Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Otter and PK Lures. There's a fish down there. I can see him on the markham, but boy, I tell you what, just really have to work him to try to get him to bite. Oh, he hit her that time. <laughs> oh, he's got me wound up. Just another great <laughs> Wisconsin bluegill. That's incredible. <laughs> you know, that just goes to show, don't be afraid to get out of the beaten path, get onto some of these lakes, these small little lakes that no one ever hits. Uh, chances are there's some great fishing waiting to be had. You just have to go explore, you have to look around, you have to walk a little bit, and hopefully you'll find some great fishing too. We hope that you'll join us again here next week. When we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the US, around Canada, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. <laughs> Great fish. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Venom Outdoors and Vulture Systems. All over it, little fish. Ooh, I miss that guy flat out. <laughs> he bit it. I didn't set it nearly hard enough for that fish. This is Tyler Berry's guide service. So if you want to catch these type of keepers, call me. <laughs> <laughs> it's too heavy, I couldn't hold it. Yeah.
All right, let's wrap it. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Cold Nation Outdoors and Acme Tackle.